I hereby conclude we in here. Had to turn the audio down because the music was loud and proud. So I had to turn the volume down. Didn't want the video to get a copyright strike. But hey, it's going to be all all right. Because I'm starting off with the Sabex Lake Press. And yeah, this machine felt really great. I was so excited to use this machine. Anyone who has used this machine knows how great it is. You can tell just by looking at it, all right? So it felt almost like squatting, to be real. Squat press. Cybex, when they created this, they knew they had a hit. They knew they had a hit. My regret leaving this day was that I did not have the ability to buy one of these for the house. Now, they have versions you can buy. I just don't have nowhere to put it. I do not have the space. And I currently do not have the funds. But, let's get back. Sorry, I'm sitting in a very echoey part of the house. I actually started this session off with leg extensions, magnum leg extensions. If you're familiar with the magnum line, then congrats. Because I'm in a gym that was built like 30 years ago. And all the, machine is, all the machines are nice. As in, they're old school. They hit what they need to hit the way they need to hit them. And there's no way around it, right? And they feel great. Um, you're gonna probably see him step in the frame at some point. But there was a um, there was a uh, fellow here that said just as much as that, and he actually recommended that I use the Cybex leg press. He said it felt really good, so I got on the Cybex leg press, which we'll see after this. And he was not lying. That angle was angling. I felt like Kevin Lavroni on that thing, man. But yeah, so. This gym actually has a lot of people that train hard in it. It was built by a bodybuilder. Bodybuilders have trained here. Uh, I believe Seth Rossi at one point was here. Chris DiDomenico has some footage here on YouTube. Um, you know, actually, this gym was brought to my attention back in the 11th grade when uh, Mr. Russo, my forensics teacher, told me, which I had him for a few other classes. And I think I may even had him for homeroom. I'm not quite sure. But we did speak a lot. He used to go to this gym. He was the one that told me actually that I should sign up. I mean, a lot of people told me that, but he was the one that was like, hey, if you're interested in bodybuilding and competing, like this is where you need to go. Of course, you guys have, that know me and have been watching the channel know that I trained at the local Y, so I didn't go. And part of that was just that I was on a plan with my sister and we I wasn't paying to go. So why leave and then pay to go here? When I didn't have a vehicle at the time. Anyways. So it was a little bit closer. I could walk to it. So this was just out of reach for me. Plus I kind of wasn't sure of where it was. Even though I kind of knew. And the building almost looks. Like it could have been like an old church or something at one point. From the outside. But it's a great facility man. So yeah. Webs World of Fitness. <laughs> Go ahead and check it out if you're in the area. Right, at one point, the video, I mean, the uh, music will stop in the video. So I'm not going to have to record as much because I do want you guys to hear just the sound of raw training. The video was slightly sped up. But yeah, see, that's the, that's the brother right there. Man, seeing his locks made me wish I didn't cut my hair for a second because it's crazy how his hair is so long. But my hair was longer than his, like noticeably longer than his, which lets me know like that my hair was actually long. But it's all right. You know, we're growing it back out. We're growing it back out. But yeah, you probably, you probably realize I'm having a hard time walking. Those leg extensions that I started with took a lot out of me. Okay? Like a lot. I wasn't even sure if I would be able to finish this, the second exercise, or the third exercise, without risking injury. Because that's how much it took out of me. But I went hard. I still kept going. And this is the drop sets that I'm known for doing, right? Pyramid up, hit that top weight again, and then the next set, drop set, right? So after the leg extensions, I did seated hamstring curls, jumped on this. Then after this, I'll do the leg press, got up from the leg press, did lying hamstring curls, used the um, 
hyperextension. Also, put a barbell on my back when it got too heavy. Took it off and kept going. Squeezed the glutes. So, yeah, your boy was feeling a little bit weak after doing all of that. I'm not going to lie. And I finished off with some uh, calf raises, which I almost hurt my back doing. The reason I'm giving you the rundowns is because I didn't record everything. I believe I just recorded um, these. And I want to show you some other footage in general, just so you could kind of see. Oh, you know what I didn't tell you guys? After I initially did the seated leg curls, which followed the leg extensions, I did the dumbbell stiff leg deadlifts, and which ended up being RDLs because my legs were shaking. I could not. It was embarrassing. Like, even with the 20s, I warmed up with the 20s and worked my way up. I was like, dude, they're going to think I'm so weak or like something's wrong with me because my legs were shaking uncontrollably. Like, it was crazy, right? But that's how it was. And then I proceeded to jump on here and do everything else. So I was struggling the whole time, but I was loving it. Now, the contraction on this thing is beautiful also. Take your time. I try to get a nice deep stretch as much as I could. And yeah, it felt really good. At this point, I'm like feeling some pain. Now, you guys probably don't remember or don't realize that I have an injury on one of my legs. One of my legs is actually injured. It's an old wrestling injury. So, and it affects the muscle. So, I'm actually feeling mu like legit muscular pain. Like, not the good pain <laughs> doing this. So, there were several times in which I was like, should I consider stopping? Uh, am I in danger of tearing something? But I was like, no, I'll just contract more carefully. And you see, I can't walk because like, my legs are toast. Legs or toes. Look at that. Falling right down into that suitcase. <laughs> nah, but it feels good. I got stuff in my pocket, so I had to unzip the pocket just to go a little deeper, make some room. All right. Now, this feels good. That look, it looks good. I can feel it just watching it back to talk to you guys about it. This is such an awesome machine. I don't, I'm not really a fan of leg presses, like 45 degree angle leg presses, but this one right here, this one right here is beautiful. It's real beautiful. So feels good of course i'm going to pyramid up of course i'm going to hit that top set of course i'm going to hit it again and of course you know the plays are going to fly off right pretty much the same story so i'm gonna let it ride
All right, so at this point, I'm really questioning my motives, right? Like, should I have actually done this? Or should I have just went on to a different exercise? But I didn't. Oh, I see someone in frame here. And this particular individual, actually, I recognize because uh, my, my nephew, he's a... My nephew is almost 18 now, but back when he was six, he did karate. And I ran into some individuals that I recognized from when my nephew was doing karate. And you say, a father and a son. And it was so great to see them in there, not only in their training, but getting it in. And they had that purpose. So it was nice to meet them. I'll tell you this. The son, I remember when he was little, he always had like... A fire in his eyes almost, right? He still got that same kind of intensity, but he's like, he's a nice guy. So it's like, he means business. Whether it's martial arts in a gym, like, he means business. And I know that uh, the father means business too. I used to see him in the gym even back then because I was in the gym, right? And when there's a task to be done, it needs to get done. You can tell people just got that discipline. It's like the kind of discipline to where you don't even consider not doing it. It's like, oh, we got to do this. Let's let's get it on. And I think that's pretty cool that they uh, both have that. Now, I'm not in the gym with my father. Currently on this day, my father was actually in the hospital. So I actually traveled. Right. I'm not in the city that I live in. And I'm at the gym. Now, the reason I'm at the gym is because I got goals. I got stuff I got to do. And the one thing my dad always says to is, you know, don't keep working out. Don't stop working out. Keep yourself in shape. Take care of yourself. Uh, you know, eat right and all that. Because too many people, right, too many people let their health go. And it leads them towards negative health outcomes. So I'm at the gym, but I'm at the gym in the morning earlier than I would usually go to the gym even because I wanted to make sure I train at a time so where I could then go back, grab my wife, and we could go to the hospital and visit my dad. Because when your loved ones are in the hospital, trust me, you need to be there. You need to be asking questions. And if you don't understand, you need to try to understand and don't just accept what they say. If something does not seem right, it's not right. Don't assume that they're doctors and they know because things get messed up. All right. You know, and sometimes you may, you asking a question makes them double back and they realize that somebody else did not do what they were supposed to do. On to this older footage. You can tell my hair is slightly shorter. I'm in a different gym. This gym is one of my main gyms that I go to when I'm not training at home. And you see that's a nebula, right? That's that Ronnie Coleman leg press. And you see, I got it. I got it. Uh, I got it stacked up. They have some hundred pounders, but I always feel a strain my bicep when I'm trying to lift it up, which is new. I think I hurt my bicep like sleeping. I speculate I may actually suffer from low estrogen, which if you're a man and you don't understand that you need a degree of estrogen for healthy um, bodily function and your joints and heart health and all that. See me just falling out of here. If you don't understand these things, then you're not understanding things. But I think mine is low, and that's why I keep hurting my joints and stuff like that. But peep these shoes. These shoes are cold. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I got the matching hoodie too. But yeah, so same thing. Y'all see a pyramid up, do the drop sets. Now, the key to legs has, since I'm talking to you guys and training legs, heavy weight. High reps. Focus on the squeeze and the contraction as you're doing it. Don't just irk it and jerk it. All right. I know a lot of y'all fans are irking and jerking, but this is not an irk and jerk time. You got to make love to the weights. Some of y'all just trying to hump up and down on them, but you got to make love to them. Love. And the reason why I'm saying that hmm, is this. Because the muscle needs to take the contraction. And a lot of people complain 
the delays were small. One guy was telling me that, you know, I told him, you need to grow your legs because he was saying that he wanted to be in men's physique. He had decent shape, great shape, actually, but no muscle, right? But I told him his legs were small. He started, he was showing me his legs. And I'm like, you need to train him harder. He's telling me how he he squats 405. So I asked him how many reps he does. He says he does that for one. And I said, tell him that's why he's messing up. I'm training a client while this conversation is going on. My client's laughing at him. The guy's girlfriend's laughing at him. And I feel bad because he was just visiting from out of town. But I'm like, dude, like, come on. I try to give him advice, though. Like, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to train to bring your legs up. And he's just not trying to listen. I'm like, dude, my legs are bigger than yours. You should probably take the advice. <laughs> I'm thinking that. I didn't say that. That would have been rude and condescending. But the point is, it doesn't matter how much you lift. The one thing that I did unintentionally, by the way, was I always train with a lot of reps for legs and a lot of volume, even when I didn't do a lot of reps on squats, because when I went to the gym, I would squat, then I would do leg presses, then I would do leg extensions. This is before I started with leg extensions. I would do hamstring curls. And, well, before I did, I would squat, deadlift, leg press, hamstring curls uh, after I did the leg extensions. And that would give me so many uh, reps and sets on legs. My hamstrings actually grew just on the, the leg curls and the deadlifting. And I, did, I never really did too much. I do more for hamstrings now than I did before. I never focused on them. I looked in the mirror like two years ago. I was like, oh, crap. I actually have some kind of hamstrings. I never realized that. So I started training them. True story. But I want you guys to understand a simple fact. Legs are going to be painful. They're going to take work. When I first started training legs, I hated it. First day, I trained legs. The next day, I walked into class, grazed the a desk at the front of the classroom and almost fell in front of the whole class. I was so sore. But I fell in love with the progress. I fell in love with going into the gym and getting stronger. Now, leg days are one of my favorite days. But you have to push past the pain and stop training like a, uh, well, I don't know what I can say on YouTube anymore. But you got to stop training like you're afraid. You got to stop training like your mom's going to come out and uh, breastfeed you or something. You're not a baby. Embrace the pain. You want these gains, but you don't want that pain. Then you're going to complain talking about, oh, well, the reason his legs are bigger than mine is because he's on them steroids. Nah. He ain't on them steroids. I mean, he might be, but you could buy steroids too. I know a lot of y'all on steroids with no legs still. It ain't because he's on steroids. It's because he's on go. He hit that, that gym, he get under that bar, he goes up and down, up and down, hitting that right curve, hitting that right contraction, putting that weight on the bar, putting in that work, all right? Y'all just up and down, up and down. Y'all not making love to the weight. Y'all just slapping them on there, getting it up however you can. And guess what? Your legs are small. You're doing leg presses. You're doing half reps. I go down. I go up. And I feel it. Like here, remember I told you about the leg injury? I'm starting to feel it here. So that's why my depth is not as deep as it was. It's not like how it was in the other video. Because sometimes it's like the um, the lattice medialis. So, I mean, the, uh, the vastus medialis. <laughs> the vastus medialis medial meaning the center of the body like median so that's that inside portion that's that's kind of damaged and atrophied that's what i've been having to work on literally my whole time now here i'm doing hack squats i don't like hack squats because usually it hurt my knees this one does not speaking of hack squats i am highly upset because force usa updated the compact leg sled to include a hack squat function a year after i bought it <laughs> And it's the same price, which makes me think maybe it's not even a year. Maybe it's a few months. And if I just would have waited, maybe I could have not only a compact leg press, which the load is from the hips, which I need because of my disc, but I could have also had an option to hack squat. I'm not familiar with this particular machine, though. 
So my depth in this particular video is not as low as I would like it. And it's probably good to you guys, but I rather go all the way down, like in the bucket. All right. This video is cool. Not because of my outfit, but my hair looks a little bit, uh, it's shorter still for one, because this is also older footage, but you know, it's uh, a little defined. Got some hair gains going on in this video. But you can see that I'm not, in these in this footage, I'm not as lean as I currently am because it's older. And I actually ran into a student on this particular day. A form, he's a, He was in the middle school last year. Now he's in high school. He recognized me. And I was slightly embarrassed because it looks like I'm wearing pajamas, even though this is like old school workout training clothes. But this was also my first day back in the gym from training legs like a uh, momo so to speak like a chump at home i was having some really sad leg days so yeah and on this particular machine this is actually one of my favorite machines it's the hammer strain isolateral leg press but i got too strong for it and i heard he ain't another one of my discs because i do it one leg at a time and Somebody was telling me, I was talking to um, uh, Wayne, actually. This guy, Wayne. And he, he was talking to me while I was doing it. And he was talking about like how people don't use a lot of weight on there. Or how it's, it's not heavy. Or something about either this machine. Or we were talking generally about certain leg machines. And how people don't have a lot of weight on. But they're exaggerating or think they're doing something. And then I put more weight on. And now this is how I knew I was getting in trouble. <clears throat> Sorry about that. When I put the weight on that I was going to use for my next few sets, you know what he said? That's heavy. Now this guy, if he says something is heavy, like seriously heavy, like he's not joking, it's probably heavy. And I realized, yes, for that particular movement, yeah. the weight was too heavy. Made it using the Subex leg extension. I usually, when I'm here, use the hammer strength, the uh, axolateral. And these, even though this is play loaded, I mean not play loaded, it's a selectorized stack. This is actually a pretty decent machine. But yeah, somebody else was using the other one, so I just got on here. First time using it, pretty cool. But you know, sometimes you gotta adjust the plant, right? So. Even if you don't have a backup, it's good to have backups in mind. Like I already knew where to go, where stuff was at, in case anything ever happens. I try to make that a habit when I go somewhere. So hopefully I can hear, I can hear this clip. All right, this is some old footage, some real old footage from a gym I used to work at that I no longer work at for very good reason. Just joking. I mean, it's a good reason, but it's not like. How I just made it sound, to be honest. But, yeah. This is when I was peaking. I didn't actually get me with the 505. Which sucks. But, I got this. And the rest were misses to the point that, like, the, I had footage of me missing weight. So, I stopped recording my attempts, even though it was to see if I actually hit depth. And then, what ended up happening was, I hit the weights that I wanted to show everybody. Kind of like with the incline press, but we don't go to the gym to record. We go to the gym to train. Hey, yo, I ain't going to hold none of y'all, but this shirt I'm wearing smells big good, man. Mad good. Seriously good. Like, the laundry's hitting the day. Anyways, I take a long time to set up. Now, this is the biggest problem. My hair was long, as you guys know. My hair is no longer long. So when I set up for certain exercises, I have to adjust. It actually feels different. My hair was long my whole training journey, my whole training career. As you guys can see, it's long hair. It was long when I started the channel. You know, it, it was shoulder length for a long time. So I've been having to adjust all of my lifts to account for this. Bench pressing is weird when I do it. Um, incline dumbbells weird. Squatting is weird because 
There are certain things you do before you lift that let your central nervous system know that you're about to do a particular lift. And over the years, I built habits of adjusting my hair, playing with my hair, and even was able to use my hair to prop myself into a certain position so that it would be more comfortable while I was lifting. Well, because I don't have no hair, <laughs> I don't have any hair anymore. It's like, uh, uh, you know, difficult. It's different. It's an adjustment. I can't adjust. Here I'm taking all day to play with my pants. For me, at this particular time, this was a PR. So I'm just letting myself get into the mood, settle down from the previous set. And we're going to set up. So let's watch. Man, you know what's ridiculous about this? I'm about to start tying my shoes. The thing is, when you go to max out sometimes, you start doing stuff, making sure the belt is right, the shoes are tight, because these are slightly larger than they need to be. And yes, they do say FUBU. I made sure I got shoes that had a flat sole and not much cushion. That way, I can actually press through them and feel the ground. I just got these shoes because they weren't that expensive at Walmart. And, you know, got a little bit of a nostalgia for the FUBU brand. All right. Even though Damon John sold it. But check it out. They work. Now I have shoe, other shoes from Rider Wear. I think I may have even had them at the time. But I don't always wear them. Sometimes I just wear these if, if I got to do a lot because I don't actually wear my lifting shoes out. You see, I had, you see, it took me a while to set up for this, but I got it together and adjusting the hair and all that. Like even now when I squat, having short hair, it throws me off, man. It really throws me off. But what I wanted to say is you guys got to play to your game. We're going to talk about genetics and whatnot, but you, you see me maxing out hair, even though, you know, the, legs or high reps high weight right but my other training for legs were higher reps as you would have seen in this video the other work that i do and i actually haven't squatted in a very long time so again some hip issues i got some other stuff going on i need to get it checked out now like i said before i got up to 505 but i think that may have been too heavy for my frame here's some footage that i put on here uh, me attempting this right here is this 495 i can't tell if there's something on here one of these videos i was going to upload onto this while well, i was going to put in there i hit the weight but i didn't go deep enough so i took it off this may be me actually setting up and showing you the reality of sometimes you don't get it i believe i missed it this day and it came back the next week to get it or even right after no i think it was next week the following week i got it I got the weight. And that's where you get the footage of me. I was at right maybe a slight bit above parallel. But for me, that wasn't good enough. And I wasn't going to show that and pretend that it was some grand accomplishment because it wasn't. So I just put this instead. And then the next week I got it, I believe. No, I think what I actually did was I took some weight off and then uh, worked my way back up in larger weight increments for the next like two or three weeks and then that's when i got the 505 i think that's what i did this was a while ago all right so yeah but the important thing for you guys to understand is that actually forget that we're talking about neurological patterning here and the reason why you see i have the same setup here on a completely different day and every time i go to the bar even talking about the hair is because when you set up for a lift, a lot of people have like the same kind of setup. You don't want to just jump into it and then start doing it. All these little things, adjusting the hair, uh, going in and out on the bar, putting my head under, stepping a certain way. That gets the brain and the central nervous system ready to lift the weight. It lets you know pretty much the movement that you're getting ready to do and that it needs to fire to do the movement. That's the pattern. Right. And a lot of us have these habits without even realizing it. Like I wasn't intentional in doing this. I just realized after years that not only I do it, but other people do it. And a lot of top lifters and people who lift and train hard and seriously do the same thing. They have their own little pattern. And when you break the pattern, things 
don't go well. All right. So that's all I wanted to do was show you guys some training clips, uh, show you what I was doing. The most recent is going to be at the beginning of the video. If you haven't watched any other video, go ahead and watch. You see, I lifted it up. It was too heavy. I was strong enough to attempt it, but I, I realized that it may not go well. Leave ego out the door, guys. Live to lift another day. It's important because you guys later on, how you want to act?